Hi again. I'm stuck with a problem. The household uh, microwave is stopped functioning. So uh, let's see if it's uh, feasible to fix it and uh, about the cost. So uh, it doesn't cost more to repair than buy a new one. Let's see what the problem is. I, I, I've already uh, opened the uh, top and investigated some somehow in there. There are many of those models of microwave, the inverter uh, type microwave from Panasonic. They're quite similar in function, board parts and everything. The thing that differs the most is the casing a little bit, the function board here and uh, what's offered like a practicality in there. But the, all the inner parts are very similar, very, very much the same. So microwave service manual, you get the schematic or the schematic diagram the principle how it works and you will have detailed uh, detailed procedures in here and how to test fix and the part list and all, all sorts of useful things in here so let's see let's see let's see first what it does or doesn't it's already plugged in we got the little dots there let's open up the door there we go I got a cup here with some water in here. It's not very much, but there will be sufficient. I don't have the platter, but doesn't matter. Close the door. I'll punch in one minute and start. That wasn't one minute. That was uh, something like two or three seconds at most. Let's see how we can diagnose something like this here. There are procedures in there, but I'll just uh, I'll just show you the different components and see how we can uh, easily fix them or at least test them. We got first the input board, this little board on top here. It's um, where the line voltage comes in. In Canada here, we got 120 volts. So um, we'll check if we got voltage there. Let's uh, quickly turn this on, AC volt, and here we got those connectors. We got 120, yeah, very close today. So we got the proper voltage at the input. There's a fuse, a 20 amp fuse in here, if you can see this. So if I take measurements on each side of the fuse, that shouldn't show any voltage because the fuse is, is supposed to be very close from a short circuit, so there's no voltage in there. If there's voltage in a two terminals at the fuse, the fuse is blown. So if the fuse is blown, that could signify a bigger problem. So just don't replace the fuse without testing any anything further. Right there, if something goes too hot in the microwave, this switch will open up. So you can check this switch with the multimeter on the home function, and it's gotta be very low, uh, very low ohms. So if this is open, this is, a, this, is a, this is a problem. If we go from this input board, we um, kind of say that uh, we determine that there is voltage in there. So we'll go follow these wires. We're going into um, switches here. There are in here three switches. Right there, there are two on top of each other. And here, a little bit less visible, we got one switch, which is um, connected by those connectors here. And we can see the, the switch switch in the bottom here. It's also um, it's also connected by these. Uh, connectors. We'll go in more details in a moment. After that, we're going to um, a board here that's piggybacked to the main control board. There's a board in the front, and there's a board piggybacked on top of it, right, right behind it. This board in the front is the one that makes the functions different from different models. Let's say one model's got defrost more uh, elaborated uh, functions or whatever this be in the front board and the piggyback board is common to all models or just about it's the board that will um, 
activate or deactivate the um, high voltage circuit that we find here. This circuit is fed to this board and when activated it will produce about I don't know three to four thousand volts and eventually activate the magnetron here which will produce the very high frequency waves that go into the microwave. Uh, here we got the lamp <laughs> because if you were stuck at night you need a lamp in the microwave and here we got the fan. Here we go. Fan's good, light's good because we've seen it before. You even notice here that I got an alligator clip. This is a, to replace, a, uh, there's a screw here that grounds this high voltage board to the chassis and I suggest you never bypass circuitries like that. You, you can get very, uh, pretty badly shocked and it's very dangerous. So uh, this, as a disclaimer, if you're not knowing knowledgeable enough into high voltage or electronic circuitries or whatever, you don't, you don't perform anything of this. Um, this board here, we'll see what uh, a little bit more in depth, what could be visually first and uh, after that a few tests you can perform to determine if it's uh, blown or not and also we'll see the test about the, um, the magnetron. We have to make sure that all safety requirements here are met before you can ever put this on. So those switches, if one is bad or not, never consider bypassing. So what happens when everything here is, uh, the, the conditions are met, door closed and all, all, uh, all things are okay. It's going to be on this board here. Um, there's a relay, which uh, looks quite like this. The little prongs here are soldered into the board, the piggyback board. And this is uh, those, I hope you can see, those contacts here going to the high voltage board. If the contacts here is good and everything is met, this, uh, this, this relay is activated and sends the voltage there to this, to this uh, high voltage board. And uh, another important feature on this board is this little connector here. There are three wires. There's one other wire that's ground. A second wire that's a, um, like the activating wire for this board. So they will allow this board to function. And there's another wire, the third wire, that says if the board is functioning. If this board is producing high voltage, you got the witness uh, signal in there that goes to the piggyback board there and say, okay, we're fine, we're having high voltage, we're working, and it will continue the uh, process of cooking the food. Naturally, I uh, took the precaution of removing the plug from the wall, and uh, I removed the two screws on top here, and you open the door in the front, and you lift the board after unplugging all the, uh, the plugs in here. There we go. Let's uh, close the door. Like mentioned before, I just un unplugged everything, like I said. <coughs> like mentioned before, there's a piggyback board on the, behind the uh, control board in the front. I'm not going to do the undo the front board because there's nothing wrong with that board. Just let me remove this okay good there were two screws it's just like uh, one screw there one screw there from these posts and this is inserted in two uh, slots there and this is the logic board or the board with all the functions this is what controls the microwave itself like popcorn you know all these all these features that you may have in there and that makes a difference between the models mostly we got this board here, which is the control board, which in which the switches, everything is connected and monitored. If something's wrong, things don't go good. I mean, you got no, uh, <laughs> not you, you don't have a working microwave. This says here, if the microwave stops in three seconds after pressing start, the 120 volt is not supplied to the high voltage section and you can check a few things like the latch switch the relay 
which is in fact that little relay that I showed you before, that little thing here, and loose wires on this on the connection here. This is one that could be loose or something, or these wires here that uh, feed the voltage to the um, high voltage uh, unit board there, or the inverter, the high voltage inverter itself. So if you if you download this little uh, manual, you'll be able to diagnose some some of the problems in pretty uh, pretty good fashion and you know fast enough. I've tested a few other things and I've already determined that this relay, the contacts in there, which uh, you know the uh, supposed to conduct the electricity, it's it doesn't uh, uh, operate properly. So I'll be changing this, and the the, the microwave will be uh, back in the working order right after this because I've taken the voltage there and seen that uh, there's no voltage uh, I mean there's no contact you know, the contacts are not uh, are not going together and they doesn't allow the current to pass in there so that's already determined anyhow even if it's going to be fixed we'll go through other steps and determine other uh, other problems that can happen and other ways to diagnose possible uh, possibly other problems Hey, one thing we need to do now, we need to remove this defective relay from this board. You got the contacts in the back, three contacts. I'll, re I'll uh, remove the solder. Let's remove this with the solder pump. There we go. That one should be done. You got to use the proper amount of heat and not too much heat because you, you may break, break some uh, tracks on donuts or whatever in there. There we go. Heat it up. Suck, suck up the soldering. See if it moves. If it doesn't move, it's not ready to get them out. I'll just heat up this one a little bit. Yeah, it's out. There we go. Easy. Defective. And let's install the uh, the new one. And about this repair, uh, this really cost. Uh, I got a few relays for about ten dollars uh, US. So uh, they cost a few dollars. If this is the problem on your microwave it's kind of worth the repair. There we go. Naturally, I'm doing the repair myself. It's very economical. But if you have to go and deal with the uh, repair shop, just uh, maybe have an estimate before. And they're really probably going to cost you more than a few bucks, though. I'll be cleaning this with alcohol a little bit and uh, I'll be back putting this on the uh, board and we'll reassemble this part. The relay has been replaced and we'll reassemble this into the proper location. Be careful to insert it into these little uh, slots there. There are three little slots there. You move it in line it to the holes here and there when you got plastic screws like these here and uh, you don't want to have problems into treading you know the, the plastic treading here you just put the screw in there and go back a little bit until you feel a little thump very you know so back slowly like i said and uh, when you feel a little thump it means you're back into the tread and forward uh, go forward uh, gently if it goes freely it means you're right back into the proper uh, proper tread without breaking it there we go feel it then start treading again there we go the piggy backboard is back in let's put this connector back there's no release so we got it reinserted without folding it be careful to um, Go gently on this, go one corner, 
one the left or right, whatever you feel like uh, first, and then just reinsert, and they will slide in very, uh, very nicely after this. Let's go and try to um, get the switches out of there. You got two screws, I think. Yes, yeah, my my memory is good. You got two screws, one on top, one there. These are the switches for the uh, door latch and the, you know all the safety switches. There we go. We get it up a little bit. Ah, uh, we open the door first. It's gonna go better. Oops. Okay, we open the door and get the switches out here there we go we got them you got this ground wire to the uh, casing on top there okay I'll show the details of this these little um, these clips here have a special safety latch do not ju you don't just pull on them there's a little latch there. I'll try to show you. There's a hole in the relay there, the, the, the prongs there. If you put this in here, it will latch, I mean, you, you're not gonna be able to pull it very easily. So, you just got to activate that little uh, press on this from this side, and it comes out very easily okay the switches now here oh boy lots of wires don't worry I'll be able to put them back in you got one switch here you can just pull the uh, tab there a little bit and pull the switch out there's a tab underneath also one on top one underneath spread it a little bit there we go, the switch is out. And you want to test this switch. I'll pull one out. There we go. This is how a micro switch looks like. Little button there. You hear a little quick click. And put the multimeter on ohms. Uh, function diode ohms with the uh, there we go contact the two uh, prongs there sometimes you have two contacts but the ones that you're you supposed to use this one is normally open if I depress the little switch on top it will close the contact into the uh, micro switch and this micro switch is good so this can go back into the circuit and the two other ones are good too because they've been tested but that's the way to test them to put it back in there uh, let's put this uh, there we go just push it in this actuator there make sure it's out of the way you got a little pin there that goes into the little the hole in the switch itself it just locates the switch get the actuator out of the way come on you get in there please there we go make sure that little uh, pin is into the hole There we go. A little pressure. Be gentle. If you're uh, a big brute, you might just cause more damage than you fix. So uh, you're not going to get out of there ahead. Okay. Put the switches back. Make sure that the contact is good. We'll put this back right in, in its spot. install this there's a tab there insert the tab it in the proper place now there's going to be a little bit of adjustment 
gently put the screw, same thing. When you get in plastic, be gentle. Second screw. There's the place where it goes. Properly tight. Do not over tight because it's plastic. Same thing on the top. Just tight enough. A good snug. So switches are back. Let's go for the uh, high voltage unit now. You can unplug this from the uh, magnetron. I did put a little marking on top there, so we'll make sure that uh, you know the red goes to the red. I'm not sure if there's a polarity or whatever, so just in case. Oh, let's pull this out. Got those two wires here, which are the uh, line voltage. Same thing, I did put a marking, but I don't think it would be very uh, important. But uh, I did put a little red mark there, a little red mark on the... Uh, so we'll have to unscrew this from the board. I'll remove this from the uh, protective case and the support case. There are two screws, one in the back here. One screw in the front here. little clips here you pull on the little clip and the board will come out of his uh, protective case here's the board make sure that uh, you wait a proper amount of time before you play with this board after it's been unplugged just in case if there's voltage in there it could be pretty high these are um, diodes for a voltage multiplier this is some kind of a flyback transformer that uh, takes the voltage from line voltage and supplies the uh, high voltage for the uh, magnetron. There we go. One thing to inspect in there is: are there any capacitors that have uh, bursts in them, or any uh, any defects or apparent defects? So you c that's one visual inspection. You're gonna check these windings here. There's, oh boy. Okay, there is one winding in this cavity there. You got to check if it's uh, this color, they're like copper color, like this with the varnish on top. You got one winding there, you got one winding into this little slot there, one, one there, one there, and the uh, main winding there. So these are the uh, high voltage windings, and they got to be this color if they're starting to get brownish or very uh, very dark color i mean this transformer is kaput i mean it's no good anymore also you're going to be able to check these diodes they are, these are very high voltage diodes they allow um, the rectification of this ac signal and they allow the uh, multiplication of the voltage in the way it is being uh, installed with the capacitors also there is a heat sink there that I think we can show we can show where uh, some parts are in there. You got a rectifier uh, bridge there and you got a IGBT uh, transistor there. This is a transistor that will allow switching um, and create you know the, the pulses that will be amplified to a high voltage. If these are sh these are short or these are short, I mean, uh, they can be replaced. A high GBT vol uh, transistor like that might be ranging from 5 to $10 or more or less. I mean, uh, not exactly sure, but uh, something in, in this area. And this rectifier bridge is not exactly very expensive also. So what you're going to have to do, go back on the back of the uh, board. You got the three pins there for the IGBT transistor. And you got four pins here for the uh, rectifier bridge you got to make sure that you use a multimeter on the diode function and you test these leads if you got any any combination you you got no uh no room for a short circuit if you got a short circuit somewhere i mean the thing is uh that the part is kaput so uh, i mean 
you got to buy another another part but before you put another part in there be sure that this flyback transformer is in good shape these capacitors may be tested too and uh, these ones too and these diodes also you take the uh, diode probe on the uh, multimeter and check both directions they got to be open in one direction short the other direction uh, not short sorry it's going to show about 0.5 or 0.6 volt in the, in the other direction <laughs> just uh <laughs> just get get the uh, the word short out of my uh, my words and you can also test this resistor if it's open or if it's uh if it's not good it could be like uh, another part that could be defective the other the other parts on there usually won't break too much and something that's quite less accessible is these little uh, surface mount parts there this is a uh, some kind of a voltage uh, how can i say a switching a switch switching uh, regulator that activates all the parts on the other side in order to uh, produce the high voltage and regulate the the voltage that's being produced also if this board's defective like i said there are not many f options that i found at a reasonable price so you might have to scrap the oven or find a used board or something but if someone knows about a good board uh, brand new boards like these that could range maybe from 30 to 40 dollars that'd be nice but otherwise if they're like 150 bucks or something I mean it's not worth it's more than the price of the microwave itself so this board we'll put it back and it, it, it's it's this board is working and it's been tested and it's working one of the last thing to test is the magnetron itself so we put this into the home mode low uh, low home they get the two uh, prongs there and if we get a very low impedance it means it's fine so this magnetron is to be considered good another potential problem on this type of microwave is the little motor and that's under the uh, cooking cavity and uh, this little motor rotates the the platter so these are the wires that goes to the motor the motor is right in the bottom of this which we're never able to see but trust me it's there and you got the fan motor there the fan motor is working also like uh, it's been tested i've seen the i've seen the uh, fan rotating so that's good and now time to reassemble and hopefully it works now i made sure everything is reassembled everything is in place double check the connectors they're all in there they're on their spot everything's solid no uh no problem so let's put uh, a cup of water in there and close the door oh yeah don't forget to uh, put the uh, line cord in the wall there we go it's in there yeah we've got uh, the numbers are lit and let's punch in one minute start Hey, we're past the three seconds point. Let's see what it's going to do. Looks good and sounds good. I think we're in business. Five, four, three, two, one. Bingo. Let's open this up. Oh yeah, this is hot. Yeah, it's oh yeah it's hot <laughs> hot enough it's not boiling yet but it's quite hot so success this is working and they really cost like a, a few bucks there you go this is the culprit i think we can see on there there we go I'll, I'll put the, the the cover back there's no uh, no interest for you to see how the cover is being put back or whatever and i'll put back that back in the kitchen then we'll be in business for uh, hopefully a long time hope you appreciate it and uh, 
It's like I say, it's common. The, all these circuitries are common to many models, so that could help uh, you diagnose a microwave if you got the at least some basic knowledge in there and could fix it yourself. So see you some other time, and have a good uh, have a good day.